Hello and welcome to our first lesson in Microsoft Azure. In this lesson we will talk about what are identities or users in Azure, what are their types and how they are created. So let's begin. Now the first type of user or identity in Azure is called native identities. Now these are the users that are directly created in the Azure portal. They are called native users. Also remember that these users are a part of our own organization. Let's go ahead and create them. So here I am in my Azure home screen. This is my main dashboard. And I can see some of the services right over here. Now if I am to create a user, I will select this option which says Azure Active Directory. Now in case you are una unable to see this option in here, you can simply go ahead and use the search box. So I'm going to type in Active and then the appropriate options appear right away so I can see this option as your active directory so I'm gonna click on it and then I'm presented with a new blade a lot of these options okay so for creating a user I have to select this option which says users now when I click on it I can see some of the users that have been already created now in order to add a new user I will click this button which says add new user and then I'm presented with this blade create user I'm gonna leave it as it is the username would be let's say the name of the user is John Doe so I'm gonna type in a short name which is JD now what is this option as you can see it's a kind of domain name now for our organization we have only one domain name registered okay but we can always go ahead and add new custom domain names okay so this is not the part of this lab so maybe we'll do a separate lab on the domain names but for now we're gonna go ahead with whatever we have now I'm gonna type in the name of the user which was John Doe this is just an imaginary user the first name would be John and the second name would be Doe now for password it gives me two options either I can let the system generate the password or I can create my own password so let me create my own password and the password that I would create is this one I have already typed in I'm just going to paste it then I can see the password here now this option groups and roles from administration perspective this option is very very important but since we have not talked about groups and roles so I'm just gonna skip this option and move along now under the settings option we can see block sign-in now what is block sign-in you might be thinking we are creating a user and we are presented with the option which says block sign-in why do I need to block the sign-in for the user now this option is for staging users maybe the user will be joining after 10 days or 20 days so I don't want to process all this information at that time so I'm just gonna pre-process all the information right now and when the user joins in I'm gonna click this option to yes okay for now I'm gonna leave it to no and the usage location I can select the usage and enforce the user to log in from a particular geographical position now this is a security free feature because uh, uh, login password user credential they compromised they're compromised all the time so this is you can call it an, an additional layer of security and then there are a few more options which is job title department company name etc pretty self-explanatory so I'm gonna leave them as they are and I'm gonna click create now this pop-up over here sh shows the status of our, of our operation and I can see the user John Doe in my list okay <laughs> now let's see if I'm able to log in using this user so I'm gonna copy this ID and then I will go to another link which says my applications.microsoft.com I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm gonna paste in the link so it looks like I'm already logged in with some other users so I'm gonna sign out I'm gonna sign in with a different account I'm gonna click use another account and then I will sorry that's not the email ID I'm gonna go back to my user and then copy this ID and then paste it right over here 
and then I'm going to click next and then it's asking me for the password okay the password that I had set up for this account was this one so I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna paste it here I'm gonna click sign in okay so it's asking me to update my password so the current password I have already copied and the new password I would give it is Ezekiel Jackson at the rate one two three so I'm gonna copy it and I will paste it and then I'm going to click sign in let's see what happens okay so it takes me to a new portal which says my app so basically this portal will show all the apps that I'm assigned so as of now I have no applications assigned to this user so let's go and try out the assigning application feature of Azure so I'm gonna go back to my home screen and then from here I will select enterprise applications as you can see I cannot uh, see the the feature enterprise applications so I'm gonna simply enter here enterprise and then it takes me it gives me the option right away so I'm gonna click on it and then in this tab I can see all the applications configured for this subscription so let's say I want to give this user access to this application which is Microsoft Office 365 SharePoint I'm going to click on it and then I will click users and groups now under this tab I can see no users or groups okay so I'm going to add a user and this user is going to be the same user that I just created in order to assign him this application so I'm going to click this option which says none selected and then in here I can search for the user that I just created so the user was John Doe it was JD so I'm going to click this and then click select and then click on this button which says assign okay so the user has been assigned now let's go to the users again and see this user and check which application he has been given the assignment the assignment so under the applications tab I can see that this user has been assigned office 365 SharePoint online okay so I'm gonna go back to the application portal to check if the application has really been assigned or not So I'm gonna go back to the portal and apparently it takes a while before the application appears here okay okay so as you can see the office 365 SharePoint online has appeared in our portal it took about one minute so while you're practicing just don't worry if it does not appear over here it will appear after a while okay just give it some time now coming back to our identity topic the sep the second type of users are called external users okay now in Azure what are external users they, are, they also have a fancy name which is called federated identities okay they are just like native users we also create these users in our Azure portal but the difference here is that these users are not a part of our own organization now the question is why do we create them well imagine an organization who is working with other organizations as business partners okay so they need to share workloads test their IT products or maintain some of our cloud resources well in such cases we invite external users and provide them access to appropriate applications and resources okay so let's see how we create them okay so once again I'm on my Azure home screen and I'm gonna go to this option which says Azure Active Directory once again and then go to the users option just like the last time and this time I will select this option which says new guest users so I'm gonna click on it and I'm presented with the, almost the same blade as the last time okay but there are a few differences over here so first of all I'm gonna enter the name now the name let's say it is Def Jam okay 
now the email address I'm gonna type in my own email address once again I'm going to copy it and I will paste it over here now the first name would be def the last name would be jam okay now in here we can type a personal message now where would we be able to see this personal message I'm gonna show you in a while so let me type the message now this option groups and roles again we have not talked about groups and roles so let's just skip this option and then these are the same options that we were presented last time block sign in usage location you already know at this point what these options are for so I'm not gonna mess up every anything else and simply I'm gonna click this button which says invite okay so it says inviting you the user Heather Sajjad 1888 at gmail.com this is the email address that I entered over here okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my email ID and check if I have received any email over here okay so if I go to my email account and I will refresh it and then in a minute I will be able to see a new Microsoft email which says Microsoft invitation so let's say if I click on it and this is the personal message that I typed in that text box okay which says hi please accept the invitation okay now if you what does it say in here if you accept this invitation you will be sent to this link myapps.microsoft.com now if you remember this is the same link that we used to log in the user that we created natively so if I click on this link or this accept invitation button it's gonna take me to the same link okay so now I'm not gonna log into I'm not gonna log into the account again because you have already seen how it works but the point is to show you how we can invite external users okay now important thing to see here is that if you see this option here creation type and this is the user that we created now in front of this user in this creation type column we can see that the creation type says invitation so if you see this word invitation that clearly means that this this user is not a part of our own organization but this has been invited externally okay so this was about how we can invite external users the third type of users that we have in Azure world are called synchronized identities in order to understand this let us assume that an organization is running a hybrid cloud model in which some of the infrastructure is on premises and some of it is on Azure we might have a domain controller on premises on which we have our existing identities or users now these users must also be synchronized with our Azure environment in order to be able to access our cloud-based applications and resources. This means that we do not need to create these users directly into our Azure portal. Instead, they are synchronized from our on-premises Active Directory server, which is done by an agent which is called AD Connect. And this AD Connect is installed on our Active Directory server on-premises. We will not go into the technical details on how this process is carried out in this lesson But the idea is to show you how these users are created At this point, I hope you understand what are identities. What are their types? What is their creation workflow? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video